would you uh, do me a favor so everybody come to the middle because i feel the all the energy is spread out and so in the middle maybe front row or the second two rows or in the chair so that's good thank you okay that's great now i feel connected <laughs> see it's change everything right <laughs> okay good hmm so when you are sitting and meditating i was giving you little instructions or okay, give focus and focus on your breath what your thoughts observe you know so when you do that did you see some changes happening in your mind did you see any changes something happening or nothing happened <laughs> or the same crazy mind crazy <laughs> same ca- monkey mind anything yes and we the awareness the recognition that i wasn't there anymore in in your, okay okay you are that miss yeah wandering around okay okay that's good that's a good observation sometimes people don't see that <laughs> so anything else you experience Yeah. Yeah, you know, um, when I when I remind myself or when you remind us to to return to the breath and focus, uh, I get to actually appreciate for a moment how strong the uh, the wandering thought itself mm-hmm. is. You know, mm-hmm. Because you know, once you realize you're wandering, you have to sort of pull yourself back, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh, you don't really know notice the the energy that your thoughts are carrying with them until you try to sort of pull against them a little bit. Okay, okay, that's good. Thank you. Um I think that the one thing is we really don't make judgments on your thoughts or don't try and repress them. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Um I think that it's it's like he's saying it's a tough thing to be in the middle of a thought and be sort of pulled back into the moment. Um, it's also important to say that the, the, it wasn't wrong of you to be thinking. And so like, to come back is good, but it's not bad to go thinking. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We understand. Anything else? Okay. Um, yeah? <laughs> Mm-hmm. and to accept it and to not be attached to it. Uh, I was able to not beat myself up over having mm-hmm. a hypermind, mm-hmm. which is good because in the past I would have felt like I failed at meditation, but mm-hmm. instead I just noticed that I have a lot going on. Yeah. And, uh, and it was okay. In, uh, yeah, that's good. In that content, you know, I can see you are doing something good. Okay, we can say something good. Now my question is is it beneficial? <laughs> I can say something is good nothing harm right whatever you said is nothing harm it's not harmful but is it beneficial? Now I'm asking these questions. Mhm what kind of benefit do you get? I mean, I came in and I had a serious headache which kind of takes me a few minutes but I I I have a slight headache now. Mhm okay. <laughs> yeah, it, of, yeah, okay, that's good. You know, anyway, you know, yes, of course, when you do this we have some physical comfort because we are so calm and focused, concentrated. Of course, that's a, one of the benefit of doing that, you know, doing that exercise, we get some kind of physical comfort. I'm totally agree with you. Anything else? Yeah, okay. Mhm mhm. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense. Anything else? Okay. Okay, that's a good thing. So, okay. So, why I ask this question today? Um, so, every day, uh, maybe many years, myself and maybe you all, we all are practicing this kind of uh, exercises all the time, which we call meditation. My My concern is, do we get enough benefit? You know, the, what you are doing is perfect. You know, perfect means good, right? You, you, are, you are doing these exercises, these practices are really good. So I'm asking now, it, do we get enough powerful, deep experiences into our deeper realization with this exercise? Why I say that, I can see when you come to the temple or wherever you go to meditate, so always you experience calm state of the mind, which is wonderful. Then we go back to your real world, then you lose it. Then you go to uh, another exercise somewhere, somewhere, maybe no need to have a temple too, you go to like a massage. <laughs> You know, you go to other physical or mental exercise, then you feel the same experience. Um, one young man who come to the temple, he asked me, I don't see, you know, what I do on a regular basis and what we do at the temple, there's a big difference. I asked, what is that? Then he said, um, he's using some substance, <laughs> you know, like maybe medical marijuana or something, I don't know, you know. So when I use that, I feel the same thing when I come to the temple. <laughs> you know you know what I mean? So I feel the same calmness, same, you know, I feel good. So when I come to the temple, I feel the same. When I do that, I feel the same. Then I keep coming to the temple, get it? I keep doing the same thing <laughs> to get it. So you can see how people, what people are looking for, that mental calmness or another little easier word, mental relaxation we are looking for, I think better than nothing, <laughs> which is good. I like it. That is the experience you want as meditation? I was questioning. Oh, you need a little bit go to the depth of the practice. If you do that, if you want to do that, how? That's my question. If you want to do that, how? So, this is my explanation. I, today, I realize this and I'm, you know, always being in this field, not just teaching to people, same time it's become a part of my practice and my realization too. I realize the biggest issue we have in our mind our biggest distraction is pre-judgment. You know, prior judgment, you know, you know, you know, sometimes we can say those are memories. Those are our previous memories, previous experiences. Uh, some may be uh, dealing with some situations and the people, whatever in your life, whatever you experience. So having that conditioned mind, we everything when we come to this meditation, we everything realize in this parameter around that you know experience. So then you decide, I realize, then I decide this is right, this is wrong. And then that experience, maybe it is not true. But I believe because it's my experience, it is true. Whatever is true to me, it is not true to you. <laughs> when you say something to me, then I am go against that. Why? That's not my experience. So this precondition, because of this preconditioned mind, we, you know, it is like a thick curtain. 
thick in like a wall. Very difficult for us to go to the other side of the wall. Why we are believing this? Those are I call frames. Those are frames. Maybe they can be rituals. They can be some belief system. Uh, however you experience with your parents. Uh, maybe cultural experiences. Because of that, very difficult for to go away from those mental conditions. To see ourselves freely, you know, without any condition. It is very challenging for us to break this habit. What we are doing now, we all want to exist this world. Being in that experience, we handle our life. Come to the temple, meditate, listen to a talk, go home, then go to work tomorrow morning. Again you get distracted, again come home, again come to the temple, again listen to the talk, again doing the relaxation. Keep doing. There is no that much benefit. But I am telling you, what we are doing is still you know, good. Yeah, that's why I said better than nothing. But we had to understand what happened in this preconditioned mind. I realize my biggest issue is I am attaching to those. Now what I am trying now, how I am going to let go those preconditioned experiences? Then what will happen? I felt so free. Then I call, I felt so detached. I felt less worries. I felt the less sadness. Does it make sense now? Because everything is preconditioned. We put that experience like a life experience. When you detach from that with deeper realization, this is what happening in our life, I think you become best, good, perfect meditation practitioners. Then you enjoy your life. Then you enjoy. Now think about having that preconditioned mind, so then things happening in your life. Somebody says something mean to you. Then we call it wrong speech. <laughs> then we talk about the wrong speech. He shouldn't say this. Why he behave like this? We always talking about what happened? We always talking about outcome of the activity. So then we are attacking to the outcome. We get mad with that. We get mad with the person. We mad with the experience and situation. Every day we are doing that. I think we never get the solution. Why? Same behavior keep happening in the world. Now I am asking for you, when somebody say something mean, when you get upset, no need to attack to the person what he said. <laughs> what I realize, I have to go inward, I have to look myself why I feel hurt. Does it make sense? Why I feel hurt? That's what I have to look. Not about the person, what he, what he or she did. We have to address it different ways. But if I want to take care of myself, I have to change that perspective. So then I have to see my senses, listening to that person, looking at that person, how I react. That's the problem. If I can separate from that whatever I see outside and myself, then I am free. Then I am not attached. Then I am not worried. So this part is very difficult and challenging for us to this separation. Why? Our nature, our condition, preconditioned mind always go talk about the last moment, what happened at the last. That's what we talk about and discuss and get upset. But we don't know where it is coming from. There is a story. So, I don't know, maybe it's this very ancient Eastern um, story. It says, when we throw a stone, you know, or something, you know, throw something, what dogs does? Dogs run, chase it, 
and bite it and pick it and do something. <laughs> That's the nature of the dogs. So then this, you know, the saying say, then something, com- you know, coming, some, somebody something throwing to the lion. Lion is not going and biting that. What lion does? I never experienced with a lion, but what, this is what I heard. Lion is always looking where it is coming from. Does this make sense? Lion, so I am asking, be a lion, not the dog. <laughs> you know, but don't see, you know, I know dog, you love dogs, right? I do too, right? <laughs> I am not discriminating the dog, right? You know, I just try to use, don't look at the situation, what happened outside. Look at the problem coming from, where it is coming from. Then you become free. So now I can, this is enough. Then I feel you are meditating. Otherwise, just sitting in the cushion, hours and hours, go to 10-day vipassana retreat, being silent 10 days, doesn't make any sense. I know some people called, I am doing lifetime my practice, but same annoying, difficult people. You know, I can be one day like that too, this is how I am living my life. So I am asking you, be a lion. Why? So don't a- attach those prejudgments. There's a Zen story. This Zen story said, there's a father and son. Father loves this young man, the boy, teenager. Always protecting only son. He go to work. One day, when he come home after work, somebody took son, you know, took him outside, burned him to death. Even cannot recognize then there's a kind of, you know, you know, the human body burned. Cannot recognize. Then he, he was thinking he was sad and upset. Then whatever remained, he make a little, uh, like a necklace, he's wearing it, honoring to his son. Because he sees something outside. Then two, three years later, he's, you know, stay in the home and doing things. Somebody knocked the door. <laughs> Then he is kind of, at night, he doesn't want to open, he asks, who is there? Then he said, Dad, this is me. (laughs) You know, I'm home, I'm here. Now this father having that remain and walking around like a necklace, because of his free free judgment, he was thinking, no, he's gone, I saw it, I experienced it, it's burned, you are lying, you are maybe, what is called, like, ghost. You are like a ghost. I don't. So my my son is gone. Now even I am wearing his remain. Then he the son was keep trying, keep trying, keep trying. Finally he left. He lost the father. The story says, somebody kidnapped the child. <laughs> then he, they burned something else there. <laughs> and cheat the father. But father believing my father, my son is gone because of his free judgment. Now he cannot find, you know, the even son is returned home, he doesn't want to accept. It's a, you know, this is a sense story. Now I'm asking for you, looking at this situation outside, don't make the decision. So I think we have to go backward and look for where it is coming from. And I think that's the best way to understand about your own practice. Otherwise it will be very difficult for us. You know, why am these things you are, I keep telling people these days? Because sometimes people are so attached to this sitting and coming to the temple, which is good habit. That habit also become a kind of annoying habit if you don't go to the depth of the practice. Now I am asking you, while you are sitting, after you are calming down your mind, so go backward and not look at the, what is happening outside of the world, go backward and see where it is coming from. So then you experience inner peace, inner beauty. Any questions? <laughs> yeah, what you say really speaks to me because um, I would say that <clears throat> the big benefit of my practice doesn't come while I'm sitting on this. <laughs> exactly. I, I hear what you're saying about the pre, 
preconceptions, being aware of them, mm-hmm. aware of them, aware of emotional things. Mm-hmm. Not that it removes them, but simply being aware of them. Yeah, yeah, about that. It's useful. Yeah. I'd say that's you know, yeah, yeah, you are correct. You know, the sad part of this, I am not telling I am perfect. Whatever we experience, meditation also become a kind of pre-judgmental experiences. We experience something, that's what we talk to people. Then everybody pick the same thing and they're carrying the next generation. So we need people who can understand even a little bit of the depth. Then we switch this and turn into the, you know, the different direction with our practice. So these days I keep talking to a um, couple of people, try to share these experiences with people because I really think I want to make a, you know, the, you know, another generation understand this whole mental practices with our meditation practice there is a different level we have to go and see this preconditioned mind otherwise we are kind of you know always easy going you know come to the temple and meditate sitting in the cushion light the candle in the morning i meditate i chant om you know, we are very spiritual, you know, the incense is burning, my house is so smell. That's what people call, you know, life is so spiritual. But that's a craziness. I call that's a craziness, don't misunderstand, that's a craziness. That means we try to walk away from the reality. Those are kind of beginning kind of exercises get into the path. After that, kick everybody out (laughs) and be free. Be free yourself. But I'm asking you, don't do it tonight. <laughs> and so maybe you are not there yet. Still keep doing it. Sometimes I'm keep, you know, you know, every morning I light the candle. Every morning I offer some water to the Buddha. That's how I grow myself. But I know just doing that, that's not my practice. Why I do that? Gratitude. Thanks, Buddha giving me this beautiful teaching to me. Because of your guidance, I am free. (laughs) I am thinking, I am gaining something good about my life. I can see right after I turn into 50, my life going um, totally uh, different uh, dharma practice. I can see. I don't know, you know, the 50 is a good age to realize more deeper things. I don't know what it is. Maybe I don't know how you experience being, you know, people are in 50. And so I don't know. I, I really like my 50. I really, um, good turning point for me. So, you know, one day, uh, one of our friend and student who come to the temple my first day, uh, Bill Reddy, um, I said, Bill, uh, I can see, you know, some changes in your practice. You know, the 17 years later, I can see you're doing wonderful. I'm so happy when I see that. Then he said the same thing, Bhante. <laughs> when I listen to your talk, you change a lot. See, how wonderful that. I change a lot too. Why? My practice, your practice, their practice, everybody's practice changing every single day. We are not the same people. Okay? So what I'm asking today, let's summarize. Not just sitting on the cushion and practicing meditation, it's not enough. Change your perspective. Look for the, you know, the, what is, the, where is the problem coming from? Not the, what you see outside. Don't look at that. If you want to look at it, that's perfect. But looking at that, you can looking at back. But when you're looking outside, we are 100% focused on the outcome. But I think after you experience the outcome, you have to go backward and see. That's what we have to do 100%. You know what lion does. <laughs> I'm asking today you are a lion. Go home as a lion. Okay, like a, that kind of mindset. So thank you so much for this evening. And so go home and have a good night's sleep. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. So uh, Saturday, uh, our biggest uh, annual fundraiser for the temple, that's the way to support our temple. 
And so still we have, this year will be slow. I don't know, people are waiting for the last minute, but we cannot wait for the last minute. We have to do lots of preparation. And so if you cannot come, please promote and tell people and, you know, ask, come and join for, um, so the taste of Sri Lanka. Okay, it's a nice night with good food, home cooked meal. And also, another uh, May 18th, we are doing our annual Buddha Day celebration. I want to support to uh, local businesses. If you have a, a massage therapist or counselor, if you are doing any uh, therapeutic work, or if you want to give a little ad to our annual booklet, Right, uh, it is a really good way to promote your business and also support our booklet. That booklet going all over McHenry County, and uh, we making couple of thousand copies. And also we are taking this, you know, when I travel around and all the monastic. So I really appreciate. I have all the information sheet about it. So if you want to pick one, okay.